Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen to the Fine Disaster, this is Battlefield 1. In today's video I wanted to talk about four key areas which I believe most Battlefield players could improve on. These will include new game mechanics and tactics introduced in Battlefield 1 as well as some of the more traditional elements that players need to pay attention on from the Battlefield franchise if they are wishing to improve on themselves. Now some of the things that I'm going to be saying today may sound a little bit basic to you players out there, but however, if you pay a little bit of attention to both your own play style, your own playing, and those of maybe even players better than you, you will notice that in most cases, at least one of these areas, you can significantly improve on. I, for my part, know that I can improve on a number of these areas as well, some of them more and some of them less. So pay attention both to what I'm saying precisely and also whether or not this applies to you. If you're really curious and really kind of savvy about improving yourself maybe watch back some of your own gameplay at one point if you've got an Nvidia graphics card for example you could use shadow play to record yourself it's relatively simple then watch it back afterwards and see whether or not some of these faults apply to you or maybe you're just such a good player that frankly there's no way I can help you get any better with that being said however let's get into the first area under the heading that is probably going to scare most of you away because it's so basic aim now we're not going to be talking about aim in general obviously put your crosshairs on target and try to shoot them but when we talking about two specific topics. One of them is something that CSGO players are going to be most familiar with and that is the whole crosshair placement headshot firing, headshot targeting. Now obviously I don't have to tell a battlefield player that he should go for the head when shooting, but do you actually go for the head? Unless you're maybe using a sniper rifle, some of you maybe when using a DMR, do you actually try to hit your targets in the head? Now obviously in some situations you shouldn't be doing that. Fast moving targets for example can be very difficult to hit in the head. However, when you're running your SMG or LMG, maybe even one of your close quarter medic weapons, where do you place your crosshairs on the screen? Are they going to hit your enemy's body if they suddenly show up in front of you or are they going to hit your enemy's Head. pay attention to this this is one of the key areas I find myself significantly lacking and in need of improvement your crosshairs should at least in an ideal world be situated slightly higher than they are with most of you players so that when you come across an enemy especially this applies of course to close quarter and a little bit of medium range you can instantly fire on their head instead of their body. Now, as I've said, there are situations where you may not want to fire on the head or the body, either because your recoil control is not good enough, the weapon has too much recoil, the target is too far away, and thus the head is too small of a target to shoot at. All of these facts are true. Nevertheless, the basic premise does hold that you should be trying to go for headshots independent, really, of what weapon you're using, the exception probably being shotguns, and that your crosshair should be higher than it probably is with most of you, including myself. That is to say, your crosshair by default should be at the height you would expect an enemy player's head to show up when rounding a corner. Next point I'd like to talk about, this is under aim once more, is hip fire. Now, how to hip fire is pretty simple and all of you will know how it works, basically just trigger through. However, how many of you do actually actively use hip fire? How frequently do you use it and with what weapons do you use it? Now, this comes down to personal preference and playtiles to a certain extent. However, certain weapons in close quarter give you an inherent advantage when hip firing while others will give you an inherent disadvantage now not necessarily that the weapon stats change massively obviously you're always going to be less accurate while hip firing but hip firing not only practically decreases your time of kill because you no longer have to aim down sight before shooting but furthermore it also allows you to maintain a better oversight over your surrounding which means if suddenly somebody passes by in the corner of your vision corner of your eye you can see him while hip firing if you're aiming down sight and this is especially true for battlefield one however is also true for previous battlefield games now that we have iron sight more intrusive sights we see less of the battlefield around us when aiming down sight it's of great advantage to be able to keep overview of what's going on around you so if you're running an automatico you're running a hell regal a shotgun in close quarter you should be almost exclusively hip firing now this is very much close quarter not maybe 15 meters and this is where knowing your weapon comes into play how far can you stretch your hip fire reliably as well as your experience with a certain weapon for example, LMGs, you can also hip fire most of them at least up to 5 meters, whereas maybe an automatico can easily be used at 10 meters, depending on the variant, to comfortably hip fire down an enemy. So this depends on the weapon you're using and knowing 
if this weapon is good for what and when it is good for hip firing but try to pay attention to this try to improve the amount of hip fire you're doing the accuracy of your hip fire that's to say your effectiveness when hip firing are you hip firing at too long ranges maybe or are you not hip firing enough in close quarter putting you at disadvantage against the person who does because it's time to kill practically speaking is lower than yours with that being covered now let's move on to another area away from aim over to a newer mechanic that is in battlefield one and not in previous battlefield games now the bayonet now obviously we've covered some of these things that i will say now charging to safety is an important part of the bayonet charge also especially for those players on operations and this is where i see a number of players not engaging this once you lose the sector try to get out of there as fast as you can you will likely in most cases be able to do this by bayonet charging and while i do occasionally see somebody joining me with the retreat with their bayonet charge i'm seeing many people either slowly walking backwards and eventually getting shot or not retreating at all which is however a topic for a another video so try to use your bayonet charge more frequently to get out of dodge especially if you're a big operations player and are on the defensive side there is however one even more important that a few few players actually take advantage of and that is the fact that you can kill a sentry a heavy class some form of elite class including the cavalry or the flamethrower with a single bayonet charge you can't kill these classes very easily with conventional no weapons unless there's many of you and this is where you can do a great service to your team even if it's suicidal to take them out in this way because they're surrounded by friendly forces a flamethrower or even some of the sentry classes can be most deadly against infantry on some of the very close quarter maps i'm obviously thinking here of argon force but more generally speaking Heavy classes can be a detriment to your team if they get and put in the right situation where they are best used. So if you have the opportunity to take one out by bayonet charge, you should always take it. By the way, on the note of taking out sentries, I thought I'd throw this in as well. Using the AT rocket gun is another very effective way of taking out any kind of heavy special class. In case you haven't tried it out, you can usually one bang them, which is rather hilarious, even if it's across the map. Now moving on then from charging through the field, screaming with your bayonet to something more technical the mechanic of suppression and most of you players actually will be familiar with the basics of it however because of the changes that have happened in battlefield 1 it has become much more of a dominant and important mechanic that you need to actively actually pay attention to unlike in previous battlefield games for example battlefield 4 where suppression in most cases could be ignored or at least was easily lived with at times so i wanted to cover some basics for suppression as well as some tips to allow you to use it to your advantage now first of all suppression though those that suffer most from suppression are those who rely on accuracy the most. This is relatively obviously going to be DMR users, especially those using DMRs at long range. Of course, this is the medic class and no surprise, the sniper rifles, the recon class with their long range headshot seeking potential with their bolt action rifles. So should you be suppressing these? Yes, most definitely, especially with the open nature of a number of maps in Battlefield 1. We're going from one objective to another, often involves crossing large open spaces if you have one of the classes that is capable of effectively suppressing them you should always be engaging in deliberate cover fire on the enemy now this sounds very fancy and kind of hollywood movie like give me some covering fire but in battlefield one this is actually an effective tactic now when it comes to dishing out suppression we all know this is best done by lmgs and frankly the amount of suppressive power that the lmgs can put out on your enemy is absolutely ridiculous a quick five shot burst in the general direction of a sniper is enough to throw their aim off so bad Sadly, they won't actually have a decent chance of hitting you despite having a godly aim. A suppressed sniper rifle at 100 meters has got a very low chance of actually finding its target that the sniper is aiming at. Now, while other weapons aren't quite as effective at dealing out suppression to your enemy, they are nevertheless still effective enough so that you should be using them when you have the opportunity. Now, those of you who play the recon class more frequently, you will probably not be surprised by this. You know how annoying it can be to suppress and how quickly you are suppressed however very infrequently do i find myself being suppressed by enemy players when sniping or actually suppressing the enemy player deliberately myself when covering open ground i tend to just try to run for my life which actually probably isn't the best tactic especially if it's a recon or medic class 
opponent. With that being said, there's one last topic on the matter of suppression. Don't try and fire your weapon if you're suppressed, and this mainly counts for the medic and the sniper. Furthermore, if you are a sniper and you are facing two enemies who have both got you in their sights, maybe avoid this engagement, because while one of them may miss you, you will after that be suppressed and not be able to actually return fire whatsoever. A sniper, you should always try and take on one enemy at a time, not least because they, well, have a higher chance of hitting you if there are two of them, but because of the suppression completely screwing you over for about five seconds after they have missed those initial shots. Last but not least, then we have moving, and movement is a big part of first-person shooters. That's no secret. There's many aspects to movement, and we could talk about it in a video for its whole. However, the one key part that I find most Battlefield players engaging in is strafing, and while this strafing is nice and all good, makes you a harder target, it's not always the best thing to do. So knowing when to strafe and when not to strafe is not only a matter of knowing your weapon well, but also knowing your class. More generally, you can say you should not strafe with anything other than the assault class. In close to medium range in Battlefield 1, you can also strafe with a number of the medic weapons and a number of the LMGs. However, the sniper rifles are not good when moving. So don't shoot your sniper rifle while moving. However, do strafe in between shots or when looking for targets. This means that you will only be an easy pick off for the enemy once you actually have found your target and are shooting for that brief moment. Now with all that being said, feel free to leave down below in the comments your opinion on my list of factors or areas of improvement for the majority of Battlefield players out there. There are of course many more, these were simply the ones that I deemed to be likely the most important and effective on which a number of players, including myself, could most likely heavily improve on. Feel free to also leave down below in the comments your future video suggestions both for Battlefield 1 and Battlefield 4. But with all that being said, I'd like to thank you very much for watching and hope to see you in the next Battlefield 1 video.